I'm Mark Pitchers. Wader wearing, tea drinking, beer trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and I've caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But now the tables have turned and it's over to you, the public, to assign my next mission on Fox's Facebook page. It's not exactly the easiest challenge, is it? Rivers and lakes, rigs and baits. He fell to the cat meat. There's been a number of incredibly tough challenges during this series. Have you been drinking the icer again? Some of which I've knocked out the park. Challenge completed. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This cart freak is not giving up without a fight. This is the challenge. One new message. 12.45 p.m. Hi, Mark. Shame you can't get to the phone right now because I've got your challenge for you. Hope you uh, booked off next week like I asked you to. So, right, I'll just go go straight in with it and then you can start preparing, etc. So, the challenge is called the Great British Carp Off and you have five days to complete it. You've got to catch a single, a double, a 20 and a 30 and it's got to be in that order. And then you've got to catch one of those from each of the countries. So you've got to catch one from England, one from Northern Ireland, one from Scotland and one from Wales. At any point, should you fail to catch one of the, the target weights, it gets rolled over to the next venue. So should you fail to catch a single figure fish, when you go to the next venue, you've got to catch two double figure fish. Should you fail to do that, you have to catch three twenties, etc. So it's pretty simple. I suggest you get on the internet, start looking at venues, and I will see you bright and early next week. Good luck. Okay, so there was a phone call. No doubt you'll do a little montage, play a bit of jazzy music or something, and then we'll get going. This challenge is very much up and running. Yes! <laughs> this is going to happen. I can sense it. What a stroke of luck. Oh no! Oh! After sickness. And then the bobbin just smashed up. Tip went round and we're playing the fish. That is absolutely exhausting. That is a big fish. That is a big fish. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Hold on, I'm not going to sneeze. Don't sneeze. <laughs> Try not to sneeze. Think about not sneezing and you won't sneeze. Just don't sneeze, then you won't sneeze. If you think about not sneezing, then you won't sneeze. Did it work? It worked, see? Told you. What's up, carp freaks? The Great British Carp Off is underway. And we live in Great Britain, so we're here already. It is July. It is 14 degrees. It's raining. So as you can probably tell, we are en route to Scotland, which is where I have chosen to catch a single figure fish. Now, this is very much a race against the clock. What? I love it. It's a race against the clock. You're kidding. Ah. <laughs> 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 well, I was, I was going to say at the end, so now I've finished talking, can I get my foot down, Harry? That's what I was going to say. Oh, let me do that again. That was good. This is very much a race against the clock. 
It is now 11 a.m. and we're not due to arrive at our destination until 12 noon. We have until 10 a.m. on Saturday to get this challenge in the bag. So let's get this show on the road, even though we're on the road, but more on the road than we're already on it. Right, can I get my foot down? I'm going really slow. <laughs> Welcome to Scotland. Fakale Gualpe. I think that's that, Scottish. That must be Scottish, yeah. I didn't no, even know they had a language. I think they do, don't they? Do, really? No, I don't know. That's Welsh, isn't it? Yeah, I know what Welsh do. Irish do. Is it is the it? Irish? Yeah, it's Irish. Gaelic, isn't it? You'd be good at that. As this was mine and Harry's first time in Scotland, we had no idea where we were going. And it seems, neither did my sat-nav. After ignoring instructions to turn the van left into the hedge, I foolishly agreed to take it up the dirt track. Ooh. This proved to be a big mistake, as it was much tighter than I had anticipated. I can't get my van through there, I can tell you that now. So, I had no option other than to swallow my man pride and call the fishery for further instructions. Hello. Hi, is that John? Yes, speaking. Hi there, John, it's Mark Pitchers here. I spoke to you last week about coming to do some filming. Right. Hello, I don't know if you remember. But, you never uh, turned up. Oh, I'm here. Well, I think I'm here. I don't know where I am. <laughs> Soon enough, we were back on tarmac and we'd arrived at our first venue, Broom Fisheries. So here we are in Scotland. This is Broom Fisheries near Dumfries. So only just in Scotland, but Scotland all the same. Now I've picked this, this venue because I think it's going to give me a brilliant chance of getting a single figure fish, which is what we desperately need. Um, there are several lakes here on site. Just been watching the, the guys behind us on the poles and they've had a few carp while we've been watching. So um, I'm really excited. I, I've never caught a Scottish carp before. I've never even been to Scotland before. So hopefully this is going to be a session of first. So let's get the kit out of the van and get started. With a number of lakes on site, there were plenty of options available to us, as each one contained good stocks of single-figure carp. But it was the match lake that came highly recommended by the fishery manager, who said the chances of catching was more or less nailed on, and that sounded good to me. Having packed some light tackle, I'd already formulated a plan and couldn't wait to get cracking. But it seemed Harry had other ideas. It's a present. Yeah. 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 What fish that on my on my two and a quarter pound? Nope. Uh, I actually managed to sneak in behind your bed chair uh, a fly rod. As soon as we're in Scotland. Behind my bed chair. Behind your bed chair. Behind the Capri Sun. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Seeing as we're in Scotland, we're actually we're actually um, three three miles away from where I caught my first ever salmon that was on that trout rod. Really? Um, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it was about about I don't know, 15 years ago. So I thought, what better way to kick this off in Scotland than catch one on a fly rod? It was a little bit frustrating, but not at all surprising. You know, catching a a single figure fish from a match venue, in in my opinion, isn't perhaps much of a challenge for Mark. So, putting a fly rod in his hand, um, I thought would just make it a little bit more interesting. What you don't know is I have actually fly fished in the past. To any sort of degree of... Oh no, it was terrible. And I haven't <laughs> done it for over 10 years, but I have still done it. So, I'm actually quite cool with this. I'll be terrible, but if we can catch one, it'll be, I think it'll be good fun. Actually. Okay. Yeah. So actually, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> I am actually genuinely looking forward to this. Oh, that's carp. Right. I think what I'm going to do 
seen a few fish just just where the uh, bank juts out here. There's a few fish just in the edge. So I'm going to uh, ping out a few floating trout pellets. And hopefully we can get a few taken. There's mouths there already. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is looking good. I'm not a cast. <laughs> okay, so for today's fishing, I've gone with a uh, seven, eight weight fly rod, uh, coupled with a, with a number seven floating line. So I've got six foot of nine pound Zigum floater hook link. That's tied to a size 10 barbless uh, Zigum floater hook. Now, I'm not using a fly. Instead, I'm using one of the Zigger liners a little piece of cork on there, which is trimmed down to roughly the same size as the pellets that I'm feeding. And hopefully that is gonna do the trick. I wouldn't stand that side of me if I was you. Mm, that's a really good idea. <sighs> right, I think I've forgotten what to do here. Oh, there's one after it down there. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, look at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I was by no way, way ready for that. <laughs> what just happened? No way. It wasn't even really a cast, I was just getting the line out and um, and the fish came up and, and took it. That, that, that bit of cork hit the water, it was probably there two seconds. And uh, unfortunately it came off. Well, I didn't quite realise just how many carp there are in here. All I'm doing, I'm just pinging in these little six mil floaters and they're, they're taking them as soon as I hit the water which is why I had that, that bite so quick, that piece of cork, they come to the noise, it's a match venue. They come to the noise of, of bait hitting the water. I mean, these fish are absolutely going berserk. And the, and the more I feed, there's actually some, some bigger fish coming, coming in as well, actually. Not that you necessarily want. Not that I need. The last thing I want right now is a double, really. <laughs> right, I'll try again and do a, an actual cast this time. This one go. Oh, they don't have pull. This is crazy. Do I look like I know what I'm doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. I've just seen people do it on videos and stuff. <laughs> Fight so hard on this rod, it's uh I can't imagine what getting a bigger one feels like. Well, probably like this, but just bigger. <laughs> it's gonna do me in the weed. Come on. Yeah! That's it, come on! <laughs> so my very first Scottish carp, my very first fly caught carp, and this challenge is very much up and running. I'm over the moon with that. It, the fight on the fly rod was absolutely amazing. I mean, for a fish of just over two pounds, I would say, the fight was incredible. In fact, I enjoyed it that much. We've got about two and a half hours before we need to catch, well, before we need to get on the road to catch a ferry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer and have, have a bit of fun. He's lovely, isn't he? He is awesome.
going on there? Oh, it's happened again. Harry gave me this 15 year old fly reel, which is absolutely knackered and keeps the spool keeps coming off. Now it's caught on the bush. The spool's come off again. Thanks for this. Bob Church wouldn't have these problems, would he? <laughs> Could be the big common. Oh no! Oh, that's a sickener. There was one common out there that was way bigger than all the rest, and I just saw a common come up and and take the floater. It was definitely a, a bigger mouth than what I had been seeing. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Right. Flick me a little bit of cork in place. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's a PB as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, I'm actually really pleased that Harry brought his fly rod and reel with him because this has been so much fun. I could do this all day, but um, we need to get on the road because we have a, a ferry to catch over to Northern Ireland now. But as far as I'm concerned, I think as far as Scotland goes, it's job done. We've caught a single figure fish and I managed to break my Scottish PB and fly PB in the same session. So uh, yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. But for now, we need to slip this little fellow back and hit the road. This far from the back, I love this one of these shots. So it's been a long day, but we're now at Stranra, which is just round the corner from where we need to grab the, the ferry over to Northern Ireland. And uh, Harry thought it'd be a good idea to get some fish and chips while we're here. Um, so he's got himself fish and chips, but he reckoned that um, they just sold out of fish and chips, so he had to get me haggis and chips. So they just sold out. And yeah. The, yeah, it's six o'clock. It was the last, the last bit of fish that they had. Six o'clock when mm. like, you know, Busiest peak time, they just but sold anyway, out. We've got a nice Scottish delicacy. So, yeah, they just sold out of fish and chips, so he got me battered haggis <laughs> and chips. Have you ever had haggis before? No, I've never I've never had haggis before. I think you should have haggis. I've never wanted to have haggis Go before. Oh, just look at it though. I mean, I have got a bit of a cold, so I'm not going to taste much. Oh. Go on, try it. It's just, it's just like black pudding. It isn't. <laughs> Come on, have more of a bite than that. That was pathetic. Do you want some? No, you try it first. Would you like to have some haggis? I want you to have a proper good go on it. It doesn't taste that bad. It doesn't taste that good. It just doesn't... Just a thought of what it is. I'm not a fan. No? It, it, it doesn't taste that bad, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not that keen. Have a, have a big bite. I just had a big 
Have I'm a big not bottle that keen and on think it. it's like, just think it's like mint. Does he park any closer? He probably could. I think he's going to have a good go. My van means everything to me. He shows more affection to that van than he than he than he does to to anyone who's who's related to him. It's my absolute pride and joy. Someone in an empty car park had just parked three inches from me and opened the door in the back of the van. It was the other one. To be fair, I think you would have more, more damage to your van slamming the door in anger. Than you slam the door. But I didn't actually you you did. slam it. You did. The van went like this. I honestly didn't slam it. Mark gets very annoyed whenever I slam one of his doors. Apparently the paint can just like fall off. But when he does it, oh no, I just, I closed it quietly and, and the slope, oh. I did not slam the door. I merely closed it with a little bit more force than normal. It's good, we're, we're on a slope. You slammed it. <laughs> you probably did. did. You did. I didn't. So Scotland was behind us and we were on the super fast crossing to Belfast. We soon docked in Northern Ireland where not only the sky was on fire but the buildings were ablaze too. We later found out that our trip coincided with the Battle of the Boyne, an Irish holiday which is celebrated by setting fire to shiz, just like they do in Stockton on Tees every day of the year. Once at our hotel, we met up with Irish carp angler Andrew, who over a beer, or in my case a lime and soda water, give us a lowdown on the local venues and the Irish carp fishing scene. For some reason, I awoke feeling particularly Irish that morning. I don't know how to pronounce your name. She's like, Gahar, Gaharrington. How come the Irish people had difficulty with your name, but not mine? Mr. 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 Nothing but the best for us this morning. I was looking forward to sampling a full Irish breakfast. What did Andrew describe a full Irish as? It was basically like a like a full English, but with potato. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he described it. So an Irish potato falls instead of fried bread, he said. So it has. My Irish just sounds like Terry Wogan. <laughs> That's all I can do with this cold. Like Terry Wogan. <laughs> Have you got time for a cup of tea? It's six o'clock. We ain't got the time. Time to hit the road. So it is. <laughs> With our porridge polished off, we made our way to Brook Hall, a private venue owned by the Northern Ireland Carp Angler Society, who had kindly given us permission to fish this picturesque water. After several laps of the pool, it was clear that the Irish carp certainly didn't want to give themselves away easily, as we'd failed to spot any carpy signs at all. Luckily for us, inside the clubhouse was a logbook which would tell us all we needed to know about the latest captures, how big they were, which swims they were caught from, what bait and rigs they were caught on, and most importantly, the number of wraps they were caught at. It turns out most of the pages were blank, or had blank wrote on them. The catch reports don't look great, Harry. Just looking in here, in the past nine days, there's been one fish caught, and he was here for five days. There's two fish caught. Oh yeah, sorry. One guy had six rainbow trout. <sighs> okay. So it's not looking great at all. And this really is a race against time. We have, we've got a day session to do this in. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave here. I'm really not getting any vibes from this place. As beautiful it is, as it is, and it, you can see it's a stunning looking lake. I just don't think, I just don't think we're gonna do it here. But there's another water about 15 minutes away. 
So we're going to jump back in the van and head off over there. Everything we've been told about, about Mill Lodge was that it's full of fish, but lots of single figure fish and, and very few doubles. As we're driving there, I'm already beginning to think that I'm on the back foot. Whose idea was this? Well, I'm now in the toilet at Mill Lodge, which is another Northern Ireland Carp Society water. And I'm just about to sign in. I'm just looking at some of the catch reports here. It's looking much more promising. Um, one guy did a 24 hour the other day and he had a 10 pound seven, an eight pound and a 10 pound six. Well, there's quite a lot of people that have, have had fish but they've been seven eight pound so it seems like the average size is looking back through other ones as well the average size oh the guy here had a 12 12 pounder two mirrors of six and 12. so yeah it's, it's looking it's looking really good actually the average size seems to be seven to 12 pound so it doesn't matter if we get a, a 10 pound exactly fish we need, we need a double figure fish. It's not a, can I say swinging contest? It's not about, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's 10 pounds or 19 pounds, 15 ounces. I hadn't left a toilet that happy since my last bowel movement four days earlier. So invigorated by the new knowledge, I marched back to the van to get the gear. Oh, good Jesus. With the van now resembling a teenager's bedroom, I grabbed what kit I could and headed back to the lake post haste. Well, we've had a good walk around and we've seen quite a few fish, a few fish fizzing, but most of the activity seems to be this, this first bit of water as you, as you first come through the gate. I've just rigged up a couple of rods with small eight mil pop-ups on and I've tied up a few mesh bags. And like I say, there are a few fish fizzing out in front of me here. So all I'm gonna do, just nick on a small mesh bag, cast it just past them fizzing fish, pull it back, and just lower the rig right next to them. Right, I've got two fish in front of me now. Which one do I go for? So I just overcast that by about five, six feet. Just pulled it back and then, and then let the rig drop down next to that, that patch of bubbles. There we go, that's the first one in. Right. There's been quite a few fish fizzing over towards the, towards the far bank. So this is where I'm going to drop this rod. Again, just a small 8mm pop-up, or 1.5 8mm pop-ups. It's only popped up about well, less than an inch really. A, a small golf ball size mesh PVA bag. I was literally just, I was just putting the rod down and setting, setting the line. And I just felt the line tugging my fingers. And I was playing a fish. And me and Harry both said after that cast, that landed perfect. It was exactly where it needed to be. And that's only been in, well, a minute. Well, not even a minute, 30 seconds. This doesn't feel, doesn't feel bad at all. They might just be very angry. These Irish carp, I don't know. They need to fight different to English carp. He's trying to get underneath this tree to my left. I'm not going to let him. Come on. This would be incredible, wouldn't it? Don't be a 20. I don't want that. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Oh, that is a double. 
That is a double. That is 100% a double. Here we go. Come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> I can't believe that. 30 seconds angling. We obviously need to weigh him to make it official, but what a stroke of luck. As soon as that fish went in the net, and it was obvious it was a double figure fish, I felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. I'd gone from feeling really, really down, like I was already behind on the challenge, to now thinking, you know what? I've clearly got luck on my side. This is gonna happen. That was probably the luckiest capture I've ever seen basically landing a cast on top of a double figure carp and it eating the, the, the PVA bag probably before it even melted. Um, he, he did luck out on it, um, but you know, to, to pass these challenges, you, you need a bit of luck and, and he certainly got it there. What I were you feeling at the start of the day? At the start of the day, I woke up, I felt bloated because I needed a poo <laughs> and <laughs> Not really well. it's, oh, um, whenever I go, whenever I leave home, it's always the case. And I thought this, this is, it's a bad start to the day and things are probably only going to get worse. And when we got to the other lake, it was just lifeless. It had been fishing terrible. And we, we had this place as a backup, but people had said, there's so many singles in there, you, you would be hard pushed to get a double from there. You'll catch fish, but to get a double, it would be tough going. When we got here and looked in the logbook, it seemed as though 50% of the fish were doubles. So, anyway, let's weigh him. Let's check he is a double. <laughs> Look at that. So, there he is, 11 pound, 13 ounces. Totally unexpected to get a bite within 30 seconds of casting out. It means we can now relax, enjoy the day and uh, take in a bit more of what Northern Ireland has to offer. Right, I think I'll get the Irish tea out, so I shall. We have a goodie bag here that Andrew brought us last night when he met us. It was really nice of him. We got some Irish soda files. So we have. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have some Irish, Irish breakfast blend. So, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> then we've just got Irish decaf tea. So we have. <laughs> then we have Irish potato files. So we have. <laughs> and the best of all that you brought us, this is just legendary. You brought us some crisps called potato. They're not, they're not even called potato, they're just called potato. It, you can say it quicker so you can eat more packets of them. <laughs> so. Ah, uh, Tito, the people's choice. Now Hughesy has to put me in the World Championship team, doesn't he really? Now that I've shown my, my world expertise, my 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 ability to catch fish overseas on a world stage. On a world stage? Yeah. Like, I know he might have caught 70 pound carp from three different countries, but has he caught a double from Northern Ireland? No. <laughs> that, that makes all the difference. If this was a world championship match, I'd, I'd have just won it. <laughs> 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 just end it now. If it literally you fish from you fish and you've got like five minutes and you have to go. I'd have just won. 
Look at that. That's a good high paw, that one. That's a cracking high paw. It just helps infuse the blend. I brought a very topical mug along with me as well, I feel. You've got to bring a, a, a topical mug when you go fishing, haven't you? It has to be with, in some sort of relevance to your, to your fishing session. You can't just bring any old mug. Great British mug. It's like, so we're obviously going around Great Britain. Yeah. But if you were going to Yately, you'd yeah. have to have a Yately Angling Centre mug. Obviously. Yeah. That at Yately would look completely out of place. People think you're insane if you rocked up with that. We managed to get some Scottish shortbread yesterday. So we're uh, going kind of with a Celtic theme, I think. Is that right? Don't know. Is it Celtic? That's not like, I'm not like... I don't know. Just kind of watch what you say over here, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> was that actually the real Pope that was in the pub last night? It wasn't the real Pope. It was a Pope. There was a Pope of some description in, in the pub, wasn't there? Are you sure he wasn't in fancy dress? Because it's like holiday season. You can't season. say that. That's racist. How? That's very racist. How? It is very racist. I don't think it is. That's, that's such a terrible thing to say, Harry. At least if I have offended anyone with my Celtic reference, you've just offended more people <laughs> with that. There you go. This is crazy. Dunking Scottishness into Irishness. Boom. That's mental. That's a crazy blend. Not the best shortbread I've had, but it was the cheapest in the shop, so... It's not a good shortbread, is it? I, um, I was probably a bit cheap there. If you're going to get shortbread, you've got to get it in a tin. Otherwise, there's no point. I didn't, and now we've paid the price, haven't we? Now we're sat here eating crap shortbread. The thing is, when do you ever actually buy shortbread in a tin unless you get it for Christmas? Oh, no, you don't buy it. You get other people to buy it. You don't buy it for yourself. That's crazy, isn't it? You wouldn't go out and buy a tin of shortbread. But if someone bought you a tin of shortbread, I think the, the best gift ever, isn't it, really? You don't do that, do you? You don't walk into a shop, see a tin of shortbread and think, hmm, I get that. You'd never think that, would you? You'd think, I need to buy my auntie something, buy a tin of shortbread. She gets it, she'd be like, oh my God, shortbread. That's amazing. Mm. That is a good one. That is the best decaf I've ever had. Two hours passed and the rods remained motionless, so a move was on the cards. I soon found fish visiting an island margin and two mesh PVA bags were promptly deployed to this area. So we're now in the new swim, which I just thought I'd go through the rig that I used to catch that last fish on in a little bit more detail. I've just got here a two and a half ounce inline lead and the hook link is made up from the 25 pound Camotex semi-stiff. That goes down to a size six edges wide gape beach point hook. And the hook bait itself is just one and a half um, mini bites pop up, they actually come unflavoured and you can add whatever flavour you want to them. I've flavoured these with uh, Dairy Supreme flavouring. And I've just got a little bit of pussy there which is just, um, it's just pinched onto a little bit of lead wire. I've just wrapped got some lead wire from inside, lead core, just around the hook link uh, and then put a bit of putty on. Lead wire just gives the, the pussy something to, to bite onto if you like so it doesn't come off. And that's it, it's a really simple setup. Um, I've also got a little bit of silicon tubing over the over the uh, the shank there just to trap the the hair in place and also create a bit of a, a blowback effect the reason for me using uh, such a small hook bait these little eight mil pop-ups is i've been using them in conjunction with small golf ball size mesh pva bags now when that pva dissolves and you're just left with that, that patch of feed by having these little small pop-ups um, just poking above the, the patch of bait, I think they can often take the, the whole thing in one mouthful. And I, and I like using small small hook baits such as this uh, with the small free offerings in the bag as opposed to using like a, a larger 20 mil hook bait or something like that. I just like everything to be nice and small. This is critically balanced, 
So the fish come along, see a little patch of bait, it's just, it's just one mouthful. And they take the whole thing in one go, and quite often I think they can take the hook bait almost by mistake. And uh, if you cast it in the right place, bites can often come very quickly indeed, as we found out earlier. So, um, right, let's get another little mesh PVA bag on this. All I do is just, I leave, when I tie my PVA bags, I leave a couple of inch long tag and just nick the hook through the end, wrap the bag over, over the shank to trap the, the silicon in place so it can't move on the, on the cast and just nick it back through. Just like that. And that's it. With a carp playing hardball, I did what any self-respecting carp angler would do to induce a take. I drank tea and took pictures of my motionless rods to populate my Instagram page. And when that failed, it was time to bring out the big guns. Look at them. Brought them along especially for this. What are those? Lucky charms, so they are. I've never even seen them. What? You, you, you've never seen Lucky Charms? Well, no, like surely they're just an Irish thing. Honestly, I've never seen them. That is crazy. Look at them. If that isn't a good nutritious breakfast, I don't know what is. <laughs> I don't understand, I don't know. Well, they're just a breakfast cereal that has your annual allowance of sugar in one hit. With just the one carp to show for my efforts, it was obvious that a change of tactics were in order. With the occasional fish milling around in the wee bed in front of me, I switched over to solid PVA bags, which were dropped in enticing looking holes in the weed. I can't say for sure if it was the lucky charms or the total change in tactics, but all of a sudden, things started happening. I have a fish blowing bubbles in my hole right now. Well, originally, I've been fishing with small PVA bags over the other side of this weed um, where I'd seen quite a lot of fish in that really shallow water in that little bit of a, a little bit of a bay over there and despite there being fish constantly visiting that spot for whatever reason I just couldn't get a bite. I don't know if it was because I mean it's, it's only about 18 inches deep which meant I was regularly getting picked up by the ducks and the moorhens. I could only really keep a rod in the water for about 10, 15 minutes at a time and then the ducks would pick it up. And I think this is that, that regular casting. Well, is that on? Oh, we're in. <laughs> I've got the fish and the whole wee bed, but we'll get him in, we'll get him in. Just keep steady pressure on. Eventually he'll have to move. I said I had to get a bite at some point. Just keep steady pressure, don't panic, don't rush. Just be patient, it might take a while for him just to suddenly kick out the weed. And when he sort of shuffles out the weed, that, that's when the, the pressure catches up with him and, and, and you move him out. So just don't panic. There you go, see? There he comes, just keep steady pressure, and out he comes. Where is it now? I'm just gonna change the, the angle at what I'm pulling now. And there he is. He's in there somewhere. Yay, got him. It's definitely not as big as the first one. He's around five pound, but um, it does feel good to get another fish. After catching that first one within just 30 seconds of casting out, it's taken all day to get this, this fish. And they do say that one is luck and two is skill. Well, Harry says that. Harry's been saying that to me all day. So it does feel nice to get, a, get another fish, but um, We've got another couple of hours before we have to pack up, so there's always a chance of one more. I'm going to get the rods back out, and uh, who knows, I might finish the session with a, uh, an Irish PB. That'd be nice. Well, 
I'm not quite sure where I got to before we were interrupted by that fish. But basically, I, I had made a change. I had been fishing over on the far side where that fish has just shown behind me. Uh, and they've been there most of the day. Um, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get a bite from there. And I've ended up dropping solid PVA bags into small holes in this pot of Magetan weed. Obviously, if you are going to be fishing weedy situations or, or, or situations like we've got here, then you need to have tackle that's up, up to the job. Um, there's no point fishing in, in weeds like this where you do need to give them a lot of pressure. And no point using small hooks, light lines. Um, I'm using a 23 pound Exocet Trans Car Key. At the end of the day, I'd rather be overpowered than undergunned. And I wanna land every fish I hook, whether that's in an open water situation or a weedy situation like this. So, like I say, I would use 23 pound Exocet for, for all my fishing, apart from extreme distance work where I need to drop down a, a, the diameter line to get that extra range. Um, the hooks, I, I started off using a size six and I went up to a size five and that obviously made the difference we landed the next fish. So yeah, it is important that you are using strong enough tackle. You know, you, you can't put the fish safety in jeopardy in these sort of situations. You want to land everything that you hook. And uh, that was obviously the case with me earlier. With our old nemesis time refusing to relent, our stay in Northern Ireland was coming to an end and we headed back to the port to catch the ferry over to Liverpool. Hello. <laughs> like to come and see my crew. So, here we are. We have, uh, we have bunk beds, a top bed, bottom bed. I think just to spice things up tonight, Harry, I think I'll go on the bottom. Then we move into the, the bathroom here and you can see we have uh, a sink and some uh, handrails here in case the sea gets choppy. I think if it gets choppy, I think that would kind of be the position I would, would adopt if it's a rough sea. That would be it. Um, we then have a, a toilet here. We also have an emergency cord in case you've got to push out a big one and it's a, it's a two-man job. You pull that, someone comes running, which is, which is nice. <laughs> so that's my wash and toilet area. If you come with me, I'll take you to the shower. So here we are in the shower. Um, and as you can see here, it's got a variable temperature setting going from hot right the way through to cold. Uh, it's also got a seat, which I, I, I find has a lovely soothing. A soothing sound. And it means obviously you can have a, a sit down shower and really enjoy yourself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So go on, scram. <laughs> After a sit-down shower and a heavy night of tossing and some turning, our overnight crossing saw us dock in Liverpool the next morning. But this was just a stopgap as we motored on to our next destination in Wales. Well, Ireland was marvellous, so it was. I loved the people, so I did. I loved the crack, so I did. And I loved the cap, so I did. But now we are back in England, but not for long, because we are driving through England to Wales, where we are meeting up with Ross, who has very kindly arranged for us to have a session on a lake called Lammy Lake, which is rather fitting for Wales, I suppose. Um, <laughs> it's, um, I don't know anything about the place. I don't know the first thing about it, but Ross assures us it is great to catch a 20 pounder so fingers crossed we've got about uh, around an hour before we reach the lake so uh, let's get our foot down and uh, we'll see you there
Once there, we met up with Ross and he wasted no time in giving us the full guided tour, as well as correcting me on the name of the lake, which was Lamb B. Turns out I've been saying it wrong all this time. Lammy is a 10 acre long park lake and we soon found fish at the bottom end where the wind was smashing down. We'd very kindly been given special permission to drive to our swim and as this was a race against the clock, this certainly saved a lot of time, not to mention legwork. I like your hair. It reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> So this is the peg that I've chosen and as you can see it's on the end of the wind that's really pushing into this corner. This is the last peg on, on this bank on the end of the lake and as we stand in the swim looking at it there's probably about 40 yard of water where you can't actually reach because of these reeds. So what I'm going to do I'm going to get in the waders just wade onto the corner of the reeds here and cast down into that corner. I'm hoping not everyone goes to, to that sort of effort and actually just fish the water that's, that's accessible from the peg itself. That way there should be quite a lot of, um, of water that receives little angling pressure. Hopefully the fish will feed a bit more confidently and we'll be able to get a quick bite. That's, that's the plan anyway. To prevent my line from getting caught up in the reeds as it entered the bay, I positioned a bank stick further out into the lake from a line to pass around and soon enough the traps were set. So, now about to see, I've already reeled in one of the two rods as I was just about to make a change. I had a feeling that the PVA bags weren't presenting the bait properly. There's quite a lot of silkweed in the margins. Um, and I felt that the bags were just sinking into that, that silkweed, dragging the rig with it. And I was just, just sat tying a couple of hinge stiff rigs, which I was gonna fish on a, on a helicopter set up over towards them far reeds. And far reeds have been knocking all day. There's been so many fish there. I mean, I'm probably being a bit impatient. In reality, that rod has been in the water about 90 minutes. And I was thinking, why haven't I had a bite? So probably I was being a bit impatient. But um, anyway, as you can see, the rod rattled off and we are playing our first Lambie carp. It's got a nice sized paddle on it. He's trying to snag me around my own bank stick. That's cheeky. I thought that was much bigger. There we go, and we've got him. He's not a 20 pounder, uh, but it's an encouraging start all the same. We've got a common here of about 13 pound. So here's my first Lambie carp. We've got a common of about 13, maybe he's a bit bigger. Maybe he's 13 and a half pounds. I might seem a little bit disappointing with this one, and I really shouldn't be, because it's, it's a lovely fish, but <sighs> it would have been nice to get a 20. I mean, to catch a 20 first bite, I think I've had a lot of luck so far during this challenge, and um, I think it was asking too much to get a 20, 20 on my very first bite. But it's a really encouraging start, all the same. So let's get him back, and uh, hopefully a 20 isn't too far away. Well, I know when I was playing that fish, I said I was just about to change over onto hinge stiff rigs and a helicopter set up. But seeing as I've just caught that fish on a solid PVA bag, I'm gonna stick with the PVA bags. I, um, I think I was just being a bit paranoid, a bit impatient. I've just found another, another spot where I've seen a few fish knocking the reeds, had a couple, couple or three casts around with a bare lead and um, it, it's weed free so it'll be it'll be fine for a pva bag presentation and it's obviously just worked worked for me there so hopefully it'll work again this 
A few hours passed and my initial hopes of a smash and dash session were evaporating. Despite my attempts, float to fishing was a non-starter and it seemed my only hope was on the bottom. I did have one more bite however, albeit for my old adversary, Tony the Tench. I need to give it some sort of specimen pose. I don't know, is that the pose? Absolute magic, as John Wilson would say. Was it John Wilson that said absolute magic? Can't remember, I don't know. Ah, uh, nah. No. Paul Daniels, that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <Paul Daniels. laughs> yeah, I always get them two mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the light is fading rapidly now. Um, I've decided to stay put here for the night. I have seen enough fish here to, to warrant me staying. I just didn't. I thought that it was completely the it was it was completely the wrong decision in in my opinion. Everything that everyone had said, the locals, the bailiffs, was the fish get caught in open water at night, and, and it was as simple as that. The um, uh, amount of occasions I've visited waters on the very first occasion, and bailiffs or locals have said things like, you won't catch carp on the top in here, they don't take floaters, or they won't take zigs in here, or you won't catch spotting bait out in here, and all that's proved to be wrong and I've done those things and, and it's worked well for me. I didn't think that it was going to work out. Dusk fell all too quickly and it was nightfall before the rods were set in their new positions. With that, our attentions turned back to shortbread. Shortbread is the most robust dunking biscuit there is, isn't it? If you give them a two second dunk, it's not the one, is it? They need, a, they need at least 15 seconds. Melt in the mouth shortbread. <laughs> Won't even melt in a brew. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, no one has ever tested the dunking capabilities of shortbread. I want to put it out there now that I did not want th this to happen because this was just going to waste time. And I felt by testing the dunking capabilities, I was providing a great service for carp anglers. I apologise for the next two minutes of your life. If, if I could put together an informative video that says, look, if you want to dip up for, for up to a minute, that's fine, but don't push it. And I felt that would have been of great services to, to carp anglers worldwide. But here he goes, the dunk test. Oh, I've drank too much. Should have timed this. How far in is it? Three quarters. It's actually in le less than that, but it's it's sucking it all the way up. How long do you reckon that's been? Twenty seconds? Mm, maybe not twenty. Do you we can go for a minute dunk? Um, I'd say it would be get get a bit tedious. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this is good viewing. I yeah. really do. I think this is cracking entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> How long you can dunk a shortbread yeah. for? Yeah. I haven't, even, I, haven't even, I haven't even got a watch. I don't even know how long a minute is, really. That's not a minute, is it? That's about 30 seconds. I have no idea. No, I think it, has, I think it must have been a minute. That hasn't been a minute. Is it still going? Yep. You've got to see it through at the end, because I, because I haven't got a timer, people will have to comment below <laughs> to let us know how long this biscuit has been dunked for. So please comment below how long. 
I mean, I will be able to work it, work it out in the edit. No, no, people want to see it. They want to see it in full. They want, don't just want to take your word for it. I might... I can't, we're really going to waste... It must be like a minute and a half now. That's really okay. We're going to waste that time. It's, it's not wasted time. People need to see this. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to remove it in a minute. I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> right. This is ridiculous. No. There. I'm... Oh! <laughs> Oh, that was literally five seconds too much. <laughs> oh, another five seconds too long. What a shame. All right, give me another one, we'll do it again. <laughs> Morning broke and it was clear I had made a mistake. The swim was lifeless and it didn't take long to notice a number of fish showing just a few swims to the left in open water. I had said to him the night before he should have moved and, and, and he didn't and he's put in behind and it's such fine lines in a, a challenge like this, you know, one wrong decision and I know he thought it was the right decision at the time but one wrong decision can affect the whole of the rest of the out outcome of the, of the challenge you know 24 hours of, of the challenge has, has just gone begging with with nothing happening for him well I did say last night it was perhaps a little bit of a gamble to stay put after most of the bailiffs and syndicate members told me that the fish do tend to push out that corner into open water and that's exactly what happened didn't have any liners, no action, nothing through the night. When we woke up at first light, there was loads of fish. Just, um, well, just a couple of pegs down. So they didn't really go, didn't really go that far. They probably moved about a hundred yard at the most, but there were so many fish showing here. So I've just jumped in two pegs down from where I was last night uh, and just cast solid bags towards the showing fish. But I think I got here a little bit, a little bit too late. Um, not long after I casted, casted the rods out, all the sort of shows really did start to, to die down and I haven't seen a fish show now for probably half an hour. But the wind is strengthening all the time and it's looking better by the minute for down the other end of the lake, near, near the boards, near that walkway. So I'm going to finish off this brew, I'll do it now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> reel these rods in and head off down there. So this is the walkway. That's obviously the main body of the lake. And then here we've got a, an out of bounds area out of bounds to anglers, not to the fish. We have seen a few fish in here, but um, the fish can obviously move underneath these boards and into the, into the main lake. Well, I just had a cast around with a bare lead and there's a bit of a, a deep hole out there. Well, I say a deep hole, it's a, a slight depression. It's, most of this water is only about 18 inches deep. And there's one spot where it feels maybe it's a foot deeper. Um, I've just marked my board with a couple of stones. Here it is. Yeah, I just marked the board with a couple of stones and lined it up with a, uh, a light over on the, on the motorway there. It's only a couple of rod lengths out, so once again, just gone with a, a solid PVA bag. So I'm just gonna swing this underarm into position, then I'll walk back round and put the rod on the alarms. That's lovely. That's really nice. That's more than a foot deep of that. Yeah. yeah, it's a proper little bowl. Well, it's probably taken a couple of hours of me 
sat there just getting more anxious by the second and um, just a short while ago I received a couple of liners on this rod and then the bobbin just smashed up tip bent round and we're playing the fish I've just seen it I don't know I don't think it's a 20 pounder but it doesn't matter it's an encouraging start to this new swim Go. Yay, got him. Yes. Now we've got another another mid-double common, but <clears throat> it doesn't help our cause in any way. But we've only been fishing in here for a couple of hours. The wind's strengthening all the time. It's uh it's encouraging. It's encouraging. <laughs> Well, it may not be the 20 that I desperately need, but it's a step in the right direction. A little bit bigger than the, the previous fish. This one's probably mm, between 14 and 15 pound. And it's very encouraging. We've only had the rods in the water uh, for, for less than two hours in this new swim. The wind's picking up all the time and I'm convinced more and more fish will arrive in the area. So uh, let's not mess about. I'm gonna get this one straight back and get another rod back in the water. Well, although the rig is exactly the same as what I was using over in Northern Ireland, um, the hook bait I have changed from a 8mm pop-up to a 14mm wafter. The only reason I've made that change is, is we're fishing for, for bigger fish. Over in Northern Ireland, we were, we're trying to single out a, a double-figure fish, a, a scraper double. Um, here, I'm trying to catch a, a 20-pounder, so uh, yeah, I'm just using a a bottom bait or a slow sinking wafter hook bait. I've actually gone up as well a hook size. I think I was using a five before. I've just gone up a hook size. I'm now using a size four. But other than that, everything is exactly the same. Conditions were bang on. The new warm wind was pushing into the bank and the odd carp had started to show. It was looking perfect. The barbecue was on, the sausages were sizzling, life was good. That was until two tench ruined the party, and with that I made a change over to hinge stiff rigs in an attempt to avoid their tenchy attentions. The clock was ticking and I was getting more and more tense by the second. With only two nights of the challenge remaining, I needed a 20 pounder badly. The tension that afternoon was just unbearable. It should have happened, shouldn't it? Well, it has happened, I've caught one, but I think, why haven't I had another? It's just, it looks so perfect. I just couldn't see where that 20 pounder was coming from. I just felt all my luck had been expired in Northern Ireland. Well, once again, I've had a bit of a, a change of tactics and I've gone old school with this one. I took off the hinge stiff rig I did want to put some bait out in the middle where I was fishing, but the gulls just descend on mass. So I went with the uh, four bait stringer. The wafter hook bait was was coated in the uh, in the GLM GLM liquid for about a week or, or more. They're quite nicely pimped actually, because I then had a, a big heaped tablespoon of GLM powder, and it almost clings to the. Uh, the outside the bait like a almost makes it like a paste this isn't a 13 pound common oh god every time it pings off the fin it's nerve this is absolutely nerve-wracking it really is especially when i know it's a this i reckon this is close i don't know what this is really I wouldn't like to say how big that is. I think it's close. I think it's really close. Well, I think I'm, have perhaps over-egged this one a little bit. I haven't weighed him as soon as I got him on the mat. I could see it was well short of 20 pounds. He's, I don't know, probably 
it may be 16 pounds but uh, it certainly had me full because the second I picked up that rod I was convinced I was dealing with a big fish and Harry was as well I think I saw his face and we both looked at each other and we thought yeah this this is what we this is what we need but uh, yeah it had me full but I mean look at it it's a stunning looking fish um, I'm certainly not disappointed and it came very very quickly after a tactical change so perhaps this is just the the start of things to come tonight who knows Well, once again, that um, balanced wafter hook bait and stringer. It hasn't been in the water. Maybe it's 20 minutes and uh, we're into another fish. Well, I was just um, in the middle of packing everything away. We we're just going to move around to the opposite bank just to make things a little bit easier in terms of not only casting to the fish, but also, if we needed to get a, a quick getaway, we could park right behind the swim there. And I just got back to the van. Harry was in charge of the rods. Just got back to the van and heard my receiver go. Looked around and Harry was, was bent into, into this one. So thanks for that, Harry. Well, it's by no means a 20, but once again, it's just so encouraging making that change from from bright hook baits over to the odyssey triple x wafters to match the match the loose feed just a dull down hook bait and both the takes have come within uh, well a very short space of time of of casting out to, to showing fish so um there's still fish showing in the area and it's looking very encouraging for tonight i, I think yeah I've, I've, i'm feeling a lot more positive than i was last night put it that way that fish slipped back we hot footed it round to the other side and I quickly deployed a couple of four bait stringers out to where the fish had been showing. I've got to say this is probably the most confident I'd been during my whole time in Wales. I was so confident we were bang on the fish and Mark had worked out the, 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 the sort of tactics that the fish obviously uh, responded well to the, the stringers and the glugged up um, bottom bait wafter things. Uh, it was looking, it was looking so good. I was so confident of catching a fish and law of averages would state that surely the next bite would be a 20. Well here I am on the swim directly opposite where I've been fishing today. There has been a lot more fish over on this bank, but there's been people fishing here all day. If we catch a 20 pounder, then that's it, we're off. But I've decided to give it till 6 a.m. and then I'm hitting the road regardless. Um, I need at least 24 hours on the next venue because I, if I don't catch a 20 from here, I will need to catch two 30s in England. So yeah, we need at least 24 hours. So, we're just going to have to wait and see what the night brings, but uh, hopefully it'll be a, a pack up early hours of the morning and on the road. If not, early start, up and gone. The night was quiet and at dawn, the reality dawned on me that I was going to have to catch two 30 pounders to save this challenge. Over the years, Wales has given me so many gifts. The voice of pop legend Tom Jones, the acting prowess of hard man testicle grabber Vinnie Jones, and the unrivaled beauty of ultimate heartthrob Gethin Jones. But what it hadn't given me was a 20 pound carp. Well, Wales and everyone in it can suck my 
I'd always stuck up for Wales, but everyone goes, goes on with these sheep shack. Well, boy -o, as far as I'm concerned, Wales can do one, it can. Well, it just didn't happen in Wales. But it's been a brilliant session all the same. I've had four fish, um, had that lovely scaly murray yesterday, about 16 pound. And after speaking to a lot of the venue regulars and the bailiffs, they say we have been very unlucky to get four fish and not 120. They say that is proper bad luck. They said we should have had at least 120 out of that. But obviously luck wasn't on our side here. So now I'm just gonna have to Pray to the carp gods that my luck changes in Cambridgeshire because I need now a brace of 30s to pass this challenge. So I'm just going to have to keep everything crossed. Fingers, toes, eyes. Let's hope we can, let's hope we can salvage this challenge. So here we are back in England. Uh, we are in Cambridgeshire to be exact. To be even more exact, we are at Premium Carp Fisheries Poacher's Pool. It's a place I'm actually quite familiar with. Um, I've held a few tutorial sessions on here and a few of the guys have caught 30 pounders. So I thought this place might give me a, a good chance of, of catching a 30. Only thing is now though, I now need to catch two, but uh, there's a lot of carp in this four acre lake. Um, there was a good number of 30s up until about six, eight weeks ago when them fish spawned. I've had a good spawn this year, so a lot of them fish are now 25 pound plus. But um, hopefully there's still at least two 30s in here. Um, let's go for a walk anyway, and we'll see what we can see. Having grabbed my Polaroids, I headed off around the lake in an attempt to locate a carp or two. A tight back channel and a tangly bush are areas I'm naturally drawn to, and thankfully in this instance, so were the carp. With spots baited and carp already taking an interest in the free offerings, I grabbed my rod from the van and got ready for a stalking assault. Upon my return I stood on the snaggy bush and could clearly see a number of carp grubbing around on the pellets I'd introduced just moments earlier. With a rod rigged up with a small wafter hook bait and PVA bag of pellets, I waded down the margin to allow me to lower the rig silently in place and bait up by hand right over the top. All I had to do now was find the carpiest looking bank stick possible and await results. the net. Just sat there with the rod across my knee, almost like my match fishing day, sat on a, sat on a seat box with a swim feeder. This, this has been in the water two minutes and it's not a bad fish. Yes! What a start! Oh my god. Ah, oh, hook's come out in the net as well. How lucky is that? The hook has literally just come out in the net. That was absolutely exhilarating. That was incredible. I just sat there with the with the rod across my knee. Just rested the, the tip sort of on that little, on a twig as a rod rest. Tip just, it just bounced round. And just, like I say, it was just like, I have a match fishing day, sat on a seat box, 
quiver tipping for, for Bream or something. Oh, that was incredible. Well, at £21 is a fair way off the £30 bracket, which is what we need. But what an absolutely amazing start. We've only been at the lake an hour. The rods had, well, the rod had been in the water two minutes and we're off the mark. I couldn't have asked for a better start to the session here. I really couldn't. So uh, right now I'm absolutely buzzing. Hopefully this commotion hasn't spooked the rest of the fish and um, we get another chance of a bite. Let's get this fella back and uh, see if we can do just that. In Berlin's with sunburned skies Where hopes are lost and dreams have died I feel it burns so deep inside A tiny flame fills me with pride That's why I Although there were carp still in the area, I decided to rest the snaggy bush and move to another spot I had baited in the tight channel. Despite a number of big fish coming very close to the hook bait. Oh, that is a big fish. They soon realized that something was wrong and drifted away out of view. With just a few hours of daylight remaining, I thought it best to set up camp and find some areas to fish for the night ahead. had a bit of a lead around in front of the swim here all I've got is is just my spot and marker rod baited line all the way through and a uh, four ounce lead all I'm doing literally is casting out hitting the clip feeling the lead down uh, which gives me an indication of roughly an indication of how deep it is um, obviously by feeling the lead down to the bottom I can tell if it lands hard soft firm I went a few feet farther than where I have just been casting. You don't get any drop at all, literally lead lands and, it, and it's, it's on weed, which is right up on the surface. Um, but yeah, I have found a nice, interesting little area there. Weed all over the surface. Um, and when I pull the lead out of the weed, it free falls all the way down to the bottom in, in a, I'm guessing around 12, 13 feet. I'm not using a marker rod here. I'm, I'm not that bothered about the exact depth. I just want to know if it's weed free and what I'm fishing over basically. So yeah, pull it out the weed, lead then free falls all the way down. Uh, and I've got a nice pull back with the lead and it, it feels, feels very smooth to begin with. Then it's gravel um, and then it's solid weed again. So it's only a small area. But what I'm going to do now, I just want to know if that smooth area out there is, is silt or, or smooth clay or sand um, or whether it's light silkweed and my legs just sort of just just gliding along the top of it and the way i'm going to do that is with this little device it's a grappling marker lead so i've took my standard four ounce lead off i'm going to put on the grappling marker lead now and the reason for using this is it has these four prongs coming off so if that pulls through any weed it'll just dig in and you'll, you'll come back with weed on the prongs whereas if it's silt or sand then obviously there'd be nothing nothing on the lead so let's uh, cast it out and see exactly what we're going to be fishing over There's that smooth bit. So I would have thought, oh now I've just pulled into the thick weed, which isn't what I wanted. So I'm just gonna do that again. Because it's quite deep, my line's going in at quite a quite an aggressive angle. So when I pull the lead up, I'm hitting the weed because the weed comes right up on the surface. But beneath, you see there's two types of weed here. 
that's the way that comes up right up to the surface. And below that is what was the smooth stuff. You can see it's a different weed entirely. So when I was pulling that lead and it felt smooth, the lead was obviously just gliding over this black. It's very thick. So it was, it was like a, almost like a like a carpet on the on the light bed. So it's, it's blanket weed with the silt in amongst it, and the lead was obviously just sliding over that briefly before hitting that very narrow patch of gravel. But when, if I had just felt that normal lead down, um, the lead was going down nice and firm with a with a proper thud. But obviously that's only thin on the late bed. And you, when your lead tree falling through 12, 13 feet of water, it's going to land with a thud. And obviously when you pull it up, pull the lead back, it's then just gliding over that. So if I hadn't used that grappling marker lead, I'd have thought I was fishing over a nice clean lake bed, which, as we can see, isn't the case. Well, I finally got my camp set up and I've got two rods in the water now. Got the right hander out in open water on that lovely spot between the two wee beds. And the left hander is going directly towards that snaggy bush in front of me. That's where we, we caught the fish from earlier, but that was around the, the, the back of the bush. Obviously I, can't, obviously I can't fish there from here, but I'm gonna put one just on the corner, on the, on the front there. Um, now it is a pretty severe snag, so obviously all the tackle has to be up to the job. I mentioned before when we were over in Ireland that I use 23 pound Transkarki x step for all my fishing. Uh, open water or snags and obviously this is snaggy and I'm using 23 pound exocet. As I said before, I always want to be um, overpowered rather than undergunned and I know that line is not going to let me down and I'm able to extract any carp that swims safely even from a, a real severe looking structure like that. Also, it's important to have a, a tight line going back to the rod. You can't be fishing with a slack line. If you, By the time that fish takes up the slack and registers the bite, they'll be in the snag and they'll be gone. So what we need to do, tighten the line up fully. Take all the slack out. And using a, a heavy bobbin like this will also help to, to take up any slack. There you go, I can't really get any can't really get any tighter there without moving the lead. Next thing we need to do is crank the, the clutch as tight as it will go. We can't afford to give that fish an inch. So that's fully locked up. That fish is going absolutely nowhere. And to alert me to a bite as soon as possible, turn the sensitivity to max. Ordinarily with, with um, having such a short drop on the bobbin, you probably only get one beep and that would be a bite. But this is cranked up to the max, so even even with that, it gives you a, a good indication. And that's about it. Oh, another thing, I've more or less got the rods right back inside my brolly there. So when I get a bite, even at night, I'll be on that rod in a second. Let's hope that happens. As you can see behind me, the wind's dropped off now. In the past five or 10 minutes, I've just noticed some fish fizzing over on the far margin over there, and they are going absolutely crazy. I've just reeled in the rods that were fished up against the snag. I've got all the, um, the wraps and everything marked off on Swim Mapper anyway, so if I need to get them rods back out in the dark, it, it, it'll be absolutely fine to do so. So um, I'm just gonna nip around the other side now. I've got a rod here. Just got the hinge stiff rig baited with a nice washed out pink pop up there. Plan is just to, to lower lower the rig into these this patch of bubbles, lay the rod on the deck. Hopefully we can get a fish before dusk because that really would alleviate some of the pressure.
Well, there's still a little bit of light left in the sky. I uh, had reeled them snag rods in, came around here, dropped a rod in the margins onto a, a patch of bubbles. And um, after about 10, 15 minutes, I noticed that they just moved a little bit to the right. So again, just exactly the same thing, just flicked in the lead, just passed the bubbles and then it low, lowered it in, down to the bottom. And here we are. <laughs> And it's not even it's not even fully dark so if we could I mean if this is a if this is a good one then who knows could still have a chance oh it's amazing that clear water when I come up there we go yes Whew. Oh, he's a bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> that's not a bad fish at all. That's way bigger than I was expecting. I, when I saw it roll, I knew it wasn't a 30 pounder, but um, I'm not gonna grumble at that. That's a cracking looking fish and, and what a start to the night. Well, at just over 20 pound, it's nearly 10 pound shy of what I, uh, what I need from this venue, but I mean, I'm not disappointed with that. I mean, look, it's a, it's a cracking fish. Although if I'm honest, I would have quite liked to catch this boy in Wales, but um, <laughs> really? <laughs> but never mind, I mean, it's a really encouraging start tonight. I mean, I've come around here and had this bite within, within 30 minutes. So it's a really positive start to the night. So I'm feeling quite pumped up and I can do it, I can do it. I know there's a very slim chance, but there is a chance. Although I was still a long way from passing this challenge, I still felt that it was within reach. I was very confident that Mark was going to catch catch more fish and, and with 16 hour, hours left, there was a, a good chance of, of two, perhaps three. Those next two bites, should I get them, could both be 30 pounds. Well, I've just come back to the, the swim and I've just cast the rods back out on, the, on their spots up against that, that, snaggy, that snaggy tree. And I'm feeling absolutely knackered, to be honest. I think the week has now finally caught up with me, especially after today, I've been running around the lake, baiting little spots in the edges. Um, I just think maybe if I can perhaps stalk a fish that I can see, then it might give me a better chance of selecting one of the, the bigger ones, one of the 30 pounders. I don't know, but right now, I think my, my best chance of a bite is, is from this, this, this swim up against that snaggy tree. But I guess we're just gonna have to uh, wait and see what the night brings. so anxious right now. You know, like, when you're a kid at Christmas, you used to go to bed really, really early. Think, well, if I go to bed early, I'll fall asleep early. When I wake up, it'll be Christmas. That's what I think now. Go to bed now, fall asleep, and just wake up. I've got the <laughs> With the night passing by uneventfully, I grew increasingly worried that my chance of passing was rapidly deteriorating. That was until over on the far bank, the same spot I'd bagged the fish from the previous evening began fizzing like a cauldron. Not wanting to look a gift horse in the mouth, I legged it round and once again lowered a PVA bag right on the spot. at all on the, the bottom rods fished up against the bush uh, last night but after I caught after we caught the last fish just going into darkness I put quite a lot of pellet down on the corner of this bush and uh, I could see from over the other side that there's fish fizzing 
that there was fish fizzing on the edge of the tree. So I quickly reeled in the rods, come round here. I've dropped a, a rig in with a PVA bag and it's only been in, once again, another quick bite. 10 minutes at the most, and we're playing another fish. Yeah. It's not a 30 pounder, I can see it's swimming around. Well, he's by no means a 30 pounder. I don't even think he's half a 30 pounder, really. But um, after a fishless night, to get a bit of action really quickly once again, um, it gives me some hope that I can catch a brace of 30s in the next four hours. But uh, <laughs> I'm never, I'm not going to give up. I'm never going to give up trying while the rods are in the water. It could happen. I could get a double take, and I could both be thirties. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Well, not stalking with one rod. It can't. They could. They could. I could have two thirties fight over the hook bait or something. <laughs> I, hook themselves on one yeah. hook. Oh, <laughs> uh, there is hope, Harry. Hmm. So I'm trying to put me down and knock my confidence. <laughs> so yeah, after after another quick quick bite from the bush where where he had caught from the night before marks sort of rushing around baiting spots checking spots and the snaggy bush that one was it was kind of the banker the banker spot and again the the, the fish had returned and, and they were feeding with gusto i'd been trickling in pellets fairly regularly through my stay and by now there was quite a number of carp feeding there. In fact, they were coming to the pellets within within seconds of them hitting the bottom. The only downside was now that there was more fish there, there was actually more smaller fish there as well. But there was two fish that were, were clearly way bigger than all the rest. Well, I sacked off that spot where he caught the last fish from. I think after all that disturbance, it would have took a, took a while for the fish to come back. And we just haven't got, we haven't got time. We've got three hours of this challenge remaining. So I've come over to the snaggy bush where we caught our very first fish from. And I think this is going to give me the best chance of getting a fish in a short period of time. All I've done, as before, small balanced hook bait, PVA bag, mesh PVA bag of pellets. I'm just going to lower it in the bush. I've just had a look. There's, there's a good number of fish there. There's probably about getting on for 10 fish there, two of which are, are up around the 30 pound mark. But, there's also quite a, little, quite a lot of little ones as well, so um, let's hope luck shines down on me for a bit. Um, Harry was on the, right up on the, the bush that sort of overlooked the main snag. I had sort of positioned myself in the, in the tree so I could look almost right down on the, on the fish. I was almost on top of them. There was one area in particular where those fish seem to, to visit more often. I'd, I'd, I'd mark that out to Harry. So I could sort of talk Mark through exactly where he needed to position his rig and, um, and then basically watch for uh, events to, to unfold. I could hear Harry up in the tree going, no, 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 under his breath. A couple of times there was there was um, smaller fish. They ca they came up right up to the hook bait. One in fact sucked it in, and I was like, no, no, it can't can't happen. Spit it out, spit it out. And by some miracle, they did spit them out. There was there was two two fish that were definitely definitely thirty pounders, and the bigger one of the two sort of si sidled in from um, behind the rig and it was just making a beeline, an absolute beeline for the hook bait. I felt that the faintest of taps on that rod tip, and it was at that point where Harry said, now strike, strike. That is exhausting. Oh, that is a big fish. 
That is a big fish. Here we go. Oh no! Oh! He said his head over the cord. That is absolutely exhausting. That is a big fish. That is a big fish. Oh, I'm trembling. <laughs> that, is, that is just so terrifying, isn't it? That is just so terrifying. Well, this is a big fish. This is a big fish. Come on, this time, this time, this time, come on. That's a great down there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh! Oh! Oh, wow! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. Look at the width of that across its back. That was the biggest fish I've seen underneath the bush. Yeah, I reckon that's probably the biggest fish I've seen this session. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <sighs> oh. I'm still like a little bit in, in shock. It just all happened so fast. That, that bite, from that one bite, as soon as I picked up the rod, everything was just, it was explosive. And um, obviously it, it started crashing right on the edge of that snag. I just give it everything I could. You, you, can't, you can't give them an inch. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's terrifying. The rod is bent. The rod was bent from the butt ring and you know, you, you can't afford to give them a millimetre. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just got to catch another one now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got time. We've got two and a half hours. We've got time. Yes! <laughs> that is so cool. Oh. Yes. oh my God. Ready? Yeah. Oh, 33 8. Yeah? 33 8. <laughs> boom! I can't say a boom. Delete the boom. Can't have a boom. Well, I've achieved what I originally set out to do, and that was catch a 30 from England. And what an absolutely amazing way to do it. Stalked from that snaggy bush, just a couple of rod lengths out. The fight was just, it was just incredible. It's, it's, it's my favorite way of fishing like that. And it, it, was, it was, it was just absolutely exhilarating. And right now, I, if this is the only 30 we catch, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm absolutely buzzing right now. Right then, you got two hours. Yeah. Yeah, come on. It can be done. It can be done.
With two hours to go, I was like a man on a mission. Climbing trees, checking and baiting spots, walking tirelessly to try and create an opportunity. I've got half an hour to go and I'm walking around without even a rod in my hand or anything. Just can't, just can't find them bigger fish. If I, if I wanted to catch a, a carp of any size, I'd be up in that narrow channel. There was fish feeding there, and nice fish as well. That's the thing. There was there was there was twenty pounders in there feeding. But if I was to go there and hook one, then, then that would completely ruin the chances of, of me catching another fish, which, which might have been the thirty. So ordinarily, I'd be up there fishing right now. But we need a thirty, and right now I've. I've not even seen, I've not seen any, any 30s. So, oh, I don't know what to do. After a quick stop for a refuel, I was back on the trail and I might just have found what I was looking for. How long have I got? 15 minutes. Loads of time. <laughs> Loads of time. Right, cool, it's all I need, it's all I need to see. So you're going to give it a go? Definitely. I mean, I know that there's not a 30 feeding up in that, that channel. Yeah. But I don't know that there's not a 30 feeding down there. Cause I can't no. see, it's too deep. But there is something feeding down there. There is, but two negatives usually make it, well, do make a positive. So the fact that I don't not know that there's not a 30, yeah. Three negatives, hang on, that's confused it up. You don't know there's not. Yes. Yes. A 30. A 30. Two negatives, make a positive, so there is a 30. 100%. That's how it works. Let's do it. Well, this is the spot on the opposite bank to where I'm set up that has already produced fish for me during this session. Um, I put in a generous amount of pellet earlier this morning and I've just seen a good fizz of bubbles just come up there. There's definitely, there's definitely a fish feeding down there. As to how big it is, well, I don't know, but we've got 10 minutes to go. I'm not going to catch a 30 pounder without a rod in the water. So uh, if in doubt, just blindly chuck it out, I suppose. Bang, that is a bite. That is beautiful. Such a hard spot alongside them branches. It's... What happens when it's time? Is there a klaxon or something? Haven't you got a hooter? You should have brought a hooter. Or a gong, that would have been better. <sighs> I shouldn't have stopped to have that scone. It was five minutes time wasted. Oh, a little fizz of bubbles just to the left of my bag. Oh, a few fizz of bubbles right on my bag. Oh. <laughs> this is gonna happen. I can sense it. Why couldn't you have started doing this just five, 10 minutes sooner? Or an hour sooner. That would've been better. Oh, and again. What do you want your count down from? Ten or five? Minutes. Uh, ten, minutes. ten minutes, please. Yeah, another fizz has just come up. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm absolutely gutted. Are you really? I am genuinely, well, yeah, I am. I mean, obviously when I had that 30, I was ecstatic. And then I thought, you know what? There's a chance I could pull this out the bag. So it's my own fault. Again, I shouldn't have like set them. I shouldn't have set them aims, should I really, them goals. No, I'm not. 
I'm not, I'm not gutted, am I? How can I be gutted? The only... How can I be gutted? What I've caused, how can I be gutted? No, you can't. There's only one reason that you've failed this challenge. The Welsh. Yeah, you're in agreement. Mm. Oh yeah. It was the Welsh. That's why I failed. Yeah. Nowhere else let me down. No. Everything else surpassed my expectations, to be honest. Yeah. Apart, from, apart from Lammy, which disappointed me as soon as I got there when I found out it wasn't even called Lammy, it was Lamby. <laughs> I'm gonna reel this, I'm gonna reel this in. It didn't actually uh, disappoint you. No, it, it didn't. It didn't disappoint, did it? it was, again, it was a, a great session, wasn't it? Four fish. Oh, they've just fizzed again. <laughs> right now. Look at that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't come away from a session having caught four fish and be disappointed, would you? No. You, just, you just wouldn't. And it was, it was, it was good, enjoyable fishing. It was, it was, you know, working at it, chopping and changing different tactics, caught on solid bags. Caught on, on, well, two bait stringers as well, that, that worked, didn't it, in the end? Little two bait stringers, four bait stringers with bottom baits and wafters. I, I, I feel like I've come so close. I feel like I've come so, so close. Just a little bit of luck is all I wanted in Wales. Maybe I used up all my luck in the other places, I don't know. But yeah, just a little bit of luck in Wales. I think, I think I've got it. This challenge is very much up and running. So yeah, they just saw that fish and chips, so he got me battered haggis. It doesn't matter if it's ten pound or nineteen pound fifteen ounces. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that. 30 seconds angling. What a stroke of luck. Potato! They're, they're not even called potato, they're just called potato. I'm trying to snag me around my own bank stick. That's cheeky. Well, I think I have perhaps over egged this one a little bit. I'm happy that I made it. All the broads around there. me. Oh. All that oh. I was sedated. <laughs> oh. I was literally five seconds too much. I put it on my mama. Shooting out with a man. I worry about the present. So I don't forget the past. I know that it's the present. I'm going to do it all the way. And it was just like your beeline. An absolute beeline for the hook bait. Because you know I long like legs. Oh. Oh, that is a big fish. That is a big fish. That's a great time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes! Oh! Oh! Oh, wow! If this is the only fur we catch, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm absolutely buzzing right now. <laughs>